Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ventures Podcast. This episode with Philip Tran is incredible. He is the CMO of Mad World. They're an international brand helping artists and collectors and community members in the NFT space figure out how to create more enhanced IRL experiences. He's going to be in Miami. For those of you who are going to be there this week, I'm bummed to miss it. But for those of you who are going to be in Miami, you'll see more about what they're up to. He's got some really cool things coming with some fantastic partnerships. So you should definitely check them out. Their website is is madworld.io. And we talk about a number of things in this episode. Advice for entrepreneurs in Web3, state of the current market, how to think about building in the space, how to not cut corners and have more quality experiences, which is what a bear market really allows you to do uh, as you're launching your products and services. So if you're listening to this episode, you can also watch by visiting wclittle.com. They're all put more show notes and different links to the different things that we talk about today. And if you're watching, you can also listen. Of course, anywhere that you get your podcasts, you can search for ventures and it should show up. So with that, please enjoy this conversation with Philip Tran. All right, Philip, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Will. I'm excited for this episode because it's been, wow, what, I mean, what a year. <laughs> what a year in Web3. Never a dull moment. Uh, you know, it's like we've seen these things come and go in crypto, but this year definitely, uh, definitely had a lot, a, a lot going on. Um, but let's, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll hit maybe some of the themes, but I'd love to just start out by uh, learning a little bit more about you. Give us about your background, how you got into space and what you're up to now. Sure. Um, I'm actually, I, I got a pretty, pretty long story, so it's good we have a little good. bit of time. Um, I, I'm, I'm born and raised actually in the Bay Area. So um, been, you know, went to school in the Bay Area, worked in the Bay Area. Um, I'm currently the uh, CMO for Madwell. We're based in Hong Kong. Um, we're a Web3 ecosystem backed by Animoca Brands. Um, what brought me into that actually um you know, I think I'd moved back to China for startups, I think early 2000s. Mm. And uh, I think I have family in Hong Kong and in Asia, but it's one of those things where you talk about uh, uprooting yourself and trying entrepreneurship, trying something new. But until that opportunity, you know, I was very fortunate. I had a mentor in the Valley who, you know, said, hey, I'm taking a gig in China. It's kind of a wild, wild west. You've been talking it for some time. Will you take the leap with me? And uh, I was lucky where uh, I just said, you know, at that stage of my life, I just said, hey, I want to, I want to learn, I want to check it out. And so I think the early two thousand that kind of brought me um, from operating side, you know, running, you know, product marketing, you know, business development for enterprise software, um, all the way towards more on um, on the buy side, on the venture, on you know, family office. Mm. Um, and what brought me, I've always been kind of a, a dabbled in the, the crypto side, almost like a hobbyist. But um, I think like most folks, uh, the, the last four years or so, you know, the, the ramp up was just so rapid. And uh, I had some good, uh, you know, friends who are and in, in, in colleague, ex-colleagues who are founders. And we uh, got together and uh, we started, um, you know, Madwell. And uh, so... In in a ways, it's 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 a you know it's a long journey, right? It's not really about uh, uh, crypto or even NFTs, but it's it's about building the organization, mm -hmm. um, building the team, and now obviously COVID was just you know the the, the strangest curveball anyone could imagine, right. right? We built the company in the midst of it, where we never met any of our partners in real life. Yeah. Um, we we did an event, uh, I think a couple months back in in New York, and I had all these partners. We threw a party, and people were shaking me and said, "I can't believe you're real. You're you're you're. <laughs> I finally met you in person. You're, you're it's not a it's not a scam, right? right. Um, so you know it, it is a long journey from operating side, like I said, to all the way through the buy side, and now to this kind of new frontier. Um, and I think sometimes it's you know whether you call it fortuitous or just, you know, being at the right time at the right you know, place. Um, I feel like that's where personally, as well as professionally, that's where we're at today. 
That's great. That's great. So tell us about Mad World. I'm digging the uh, logo icon in the back and your your background there. Oh, yeah. What are, what are, what are y'all up to? What's what's the, what's the origin story in terms of the the value value proposition for the world here? Yeah. So we like a lot of folks. You know, we we founded the company around helping a lot of brands. Mm. Um, figure out what their strategy, Web3 strategy. I, back then, mm. we didn't even call it a Web3 strategy. It's like, mm. oh, well, you don't know what NPs are? Maybe we'll help you build a digital product. Mm. Um, but what we what we realized was our journey, um, again, we're very fortunate to have some very um, successful and well-reputed uh, IPs that said, hey, we want to work with you guys. And so we've broadened our approach where um, now we talk about we want to focus on vertical communities, specifically anime, manga, um, music. We want to talk about action sports. We want to talk about you know streetwear. So rather than singular projects, we want to organize fandom into these vertical spaces. Got it. Got it. Cool. So what, you know, what are you all up to in the States uh, this week? So you're, it sounds like some things going on in LA, some things going on in Miami. What's uh, for folks that maybe are going to be in Miami, what, uh, what, what should they expect? Yeah, so uh, we have some, you know, it's a very busy week, obviously, for Web3. There, there are a number of events um, coinciding with Art Basel. Um, we are working with NFT Now um, and a couple other companies where we will do uh, demo um, some uh, interesting, not only uh, digital products, but it's actually tied to a physical performance. So for folks who will be in um, downtown Miami, um, you know, the, the gateway um, hosted by NFT now is a, is a it's going to be a pretty uh, wild week of uh, events. So we're, we're pretty excited to work with those guys, um, as well as our, our good friends from um, Phase Clan. They're, they're, we're joined in to help in producing a pretty pretty exciting program for the for the audience. Got it, got it. So then, in terms of just you know, it's such a fascinating topic: the Web three strategy, right? NFT strategies with different types of tokens, DAOs, you know, play, interfacing with metaverses, uh, DeFi strategies. The landscape has changed. I mean, a year ago, right, it was the top of the market. All of us, the parties were pretty ridiculous. You know, yep. instead of one yacht, there was like seven yachts in different parts of the world and everyone thought this would never end. Uh, and then this year happened. Uh, strategies have changed. We're in the, a bear market. Uh, there's been a number of pretty interesting collapses. You know, the Warren Buffett quote, when the tide goes out, you get to see who's not wearing pants. Well, there's a number of people definitely not not been wearing pants this year. Um how what's your commentary on 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 the market like how 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 has it changed in terms of web3 strategies for groups that are going from from different angles so for us i think um you know in a way we we're very fortunate um that the the bear market has actually given us more time to build mm. um to be to be candid mm. i think this if you if you look at ourselves 6 months ago there's a lot of temptation to cut corners <laughs> and there's a lot of temptation to just push things out when we know for a fact we're not ready. Mm. And the whether or not it's related to the token, I mean, everyone is pushing out things left and right because they can, they want to find an angle to elevate the token. And, you know, we deliberately said to ourselves, Hey, you know what, let's take a time out. Um, if we build the right fandom for, like I said, the, the four verticals that we've, you know, that I alluded to earlier, mm -hmm. then we, we're targeting, we're, we're, we're providing kind of a next gen targeting, right? For, you know, people always say in web two, the, the, the giant media companies or social media went too far in terms of targeting the evolution for web three is, can we do better? Right. And you know, I, I always tell my guys, it's I they know me, I love snowboarding, um, I love skateboarding, but in web three, you don't know that about me. Hmm. And there's it's very difficult for you to know to come to me and say, Hey Phil, you know, can you you know come hang out with our, you know, uh at the skate park because one of your heroes are hanging out there? It's a hard thing to pull off. And for us, we feel like, hey, that's an interesting angle where we can weave a digital play with this um 
IRL. So the IRL that we envision is a little bit different than just throwing the 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 part the NFT party, right? Because mm. um, for those events, it doesn't actually enhance a a fan experience. It doesn't bring you back for more. It doesn't really um, tell you a story. Or, mm. You know, you, you have a good time, you have fun, um, but you're not going to invest more into the IP or your heroes um, beyond that. So from that perspective, we think um, not only are we building new products, but we're also envisioning different kinds of uh, IRLs. Mm, mm, mm. So let's talk, if you don't, if you don't mind, so let's talk about those four verticals. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm really curious yep. where you're heading, like how, how, what your sort of um, your themes are and, and, and strategies in those verticals. Yeah. So for, you know, we're, again, we're very fortunate. Um, we have some great uh, partners in Japan and we are now um, partnering with um, Kodansha, who is one of the big um, comic uh, pub, uh, anime manga publishers. Um, you know, they, they uh, have rights for everything that goes in a shell and, uh, we're, we're actually unveiling that uh, as a collection uh, mm. later this week at LA, LA Comic Con. Mm. Um, but we're, in addition to Kodansha, we're actually working with a number of other uh, Japanese IPs to reimagine um, what they, you know, existing IP as well as new IP. How can they use Web3 as a platform to either reach new fans? So, Ghost and Shaw, for example, has been, the, the, the anime came out in 1995. Of course, I watched it. Um, a lot of the the, the Matrix, uh, right. uh, the the creators, you know, all took inspiration from it. But if we talk to anyone, you know, the sixteen to twenty year olds, they probably have it's it's a new it's a new platform. It's a new medium mm. um, for them. It's a new story. So we want to bring some of these using Web three to connect with a new generation of fans. Um, so that's that's one. Um, for athletes, which is a really interesting story, we're working actually now with a lot of the Olympian um, action sports um, athletes. Mm. So, the, 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 you know, we, we call ourselves the multiverse, you know, artist defender, right? So by, by virtue of the name, you know, we, the elite athletes of the world don't need any, our efforts to help defend their interests. Why we pick action sports, frankly, is... Um, we think that there's a lot of talent in these, you know, for lack of a better word, X game style sports. Um, they're very, by nature, they're very similar to Web3 artists where they're looking for a medium to express themselves and of course to monetize. Mm -hmm. So we give, you know, whether it's skateboarders, whether it's BMX, um, all those guys that, you know, jump off a plane, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're looking at different ways that we can work together and reimagine other than playing on cable TV, right. Um, and selling commercials. So that we think that that could be a new way to, uh, again, reach a new generation of fans. I mean, I grew up watching the, the X games on, you know, the popular sports mm -hmm. networks, but mm -hmm. those, those are all, those days are gone. Right. And I think the, the new generation, they, that's not how they experience these, um, athletes and their heroics mm. so yeah mm. so that just gives you an example of two of our our major initiatives mm. Mm. so where do you think where, where do you think the web3 space is heading like let's give us a, a, a picture if you you know crystal ball a couple of years what are the, at least what are the themes that you're seeing coming out of this bear market if and when that happens when that happens <laughs> uh yeah. what what are the themes you're seeing yeah well, so there's a couple of things that you'll notice um, that I think more and more Web2 brands are entering the space. Mm. Um, every, you'll, you'll see lots of news about, you know, obviously what Nike's doing, what Starbucks is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these Web2 you know, brands are still in the experimentation stage. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the luxury product, uh, you know, the, the European uh, uh, luxury brands are... Mm -hmm still looking at different types of technologies to reach, again, a new generation of fans. Um, so we think that the the journey, um, the next probably, you know, bear market aside, I think you're talking probably about a two, three journey, two, three year journey where the products uh, will be 
the product roadmaps will be further refined. Um, in fact, all this talk about metaverse, it may or may not be the end all be all. It could be one journey for one of the IPs, but it may not work for most of them. In in you know for for whether is it a game? Maybe not. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, companies now work pr producing gaming assets, um, monetizing gaming assets. That's great, and it may work for some, um, but there is no set formula. I think the diversity uh, and and opportunity offered by these brands because of their significant investment in this space will give a lot of entrepreneurs and creators the chance to experiment. So there, I think I think next two three years is fully experimentation, um, and as we emerge from that, uh, I think we'll have a better idea of you know how we go from kind of the virtual world to uh, you know, maybe kind of interconnected, somewhat interconnected uh, digital spaces and all the way, you know, to vision for the metaverse, which is probably years out. Mm, 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 yeah, yeah. So tell us about the products you're building, you know, in as much as you can reveal, like what, what, what are the things coming? What, what's, what's, what's sort of a roadmap in, in, in the products that you're working on? Yeah, so um, we, we got a couple um items that we're unveiling um this week uh in ah. la comic-con um one of them that we're very proud to do is you know we 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 call ourselves uh when we pride ourselves on bringing kind of the global culture to web3 mm. and uh one of the things that we uh are bringing through the ghost in the shell collab is this uh i think it is an art form developed back in the 1600s in japan it's called a yukioe. Mm. We were bringing this physical style and anime, so all together. So we found craftsmen in Japan cool. that could carve. They would hand make these uh, stamps, if you will, and each painting is actually a one of one. So mm. when we look at the, uh, the 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 visual, you people that buy the NFT. You know, people always say, hey, is that just a JPEG? Well, guess what? You also get the one of one that there's only one other one like it in the world mm -hmm. um, created by, handmade by one of these craftsmen. So we think that this is going to be a cool new way to in reintroduce to a certain uh, type of collector. Mm -hmm. um, we will unveil over time other kind of digital features and utilities to the NFT. But for the event, we're going to focus on saying, hey, we're... We're taking this uh, historical uh, and meaningful, uh, you know, art form to a global audience. So we're pretty pretty excited to uh, you know take a stab at it, and uh, we hope that uh, people will be excited as much as we are. <laughs> fun, fun. Okay. So a lot of the audience, you know, venture builders, venture investors, a lot of entrepreneurs listening in that are experimenting in Web three and a bunch of different fronts. A lot, a lot of different levels of the stack so to speak what advice do you have for entrepreneurs that are building in web3 that are getting into it right now in the middle of this or i don't know if it's the middle but at least in this bear market like what what advice do you have for them um i would say and and i would say that to our own teams as well is mm. right now we uh we're internally we're spending some time building infrastructure products is it the sexiest things? Not really. Mm. Um, but projects, features that enhance and lower the barrier for uh, the Web2 audience, I think, is the number one priority for almost all of our engineering teams. Mm. Um, doesn't matter which part of the stack that you, you're you involved in. Because if you look at what I mentioned earlier, which is all these Web2 companies jumping on board, and if they're successful, pushing and helping navigate their existing core fans towards Web3, then the more you're able to provide uh, services, um, you know, tooling, where, we're, for example, we're talking to lots of partners right now within the, you know, our you know, business partnerships and whatnot. Lots of companies now are switching gears from actually doing projects or advisory work to more infrastructure. Um, and I think this is actually healthy. Um, and it mirrors uh, what had happened during the earlier 2000s, right? You you have the the dot com boom, mm. then it kind of dialed down a little bit, right? And if you look at the history, what was built 
during that time were, you know, the the really sustainable models that carried us through the latter part of the 2000s, mm. right? Not only infrastructure, but also business models. I think we're likely to go through that same process for Web3. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. That's good. Well, what, let's see. What else haven't we talked about yet in terms of, it sounds like you're working on a bunch of different things. Like what, what different areas? I'm, I'm curious as you have multiple teams and you're running in multiple directions here, like what, what, what else are you working on? Yeah. So in it, you know, I mentioned anime manga, I mentioned um, the, uh, the sports. We're also, um, th- th- those are the, um, we've done quite a bit in terms of announcements um, uh, on uh, who we're working with. Um, in the next year, we're going to do quite a bit more in the streetwear and music vertical. Um, mm. We 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 hope to uh, we we got some pretty cool artists and brands that we are uh, looking to do some pretty pretty crazy unveilings next year. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, and ultimately, what we're trying to do is not so a lot of folks. Um, look at nfts now and or just digital assets in general as a way to make money and we're we're trying to figure out how to reshape the narrative mm. around fandom so if you're fans um what makes you engage right with the athlete or the brand so we're re- we're trying to focus our efforts around you know how we how we have that conversation with uh, the fan um we're also looking at can we uh, be more successful at carving out different audiences. So, for example, the traditional Web three folks are either you know the the investor class or the collector class, and their behavior and expectations are very different from a fan. So, we when we look at it, we think about oh, well, does it require a different product? Does it require a different set of utilities? Um, how do we reach out to them? Right? Do they hang out in a different you know, they may not be the Discord type, right? So right, right. We're, we're we're trying to reimagine that fan experience before we actually jump in and build products. Because I think the 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 temptation again is to say, hey, if I can crank this out fast, I'll just you know cut not cut out and run. And I don't think that is healthy for the industry. Um, in fact, you know, some of the 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 discussions now regarding royalties is in that in that uh, space as well. Um, you know, we we obviously we were in the same um, uh, purview as like X two Y two Open C regarding creator royalties. Mm-hmm. But I would make the argument that we need to, as an industry, as we need to talk more about okay, besides royalties, what other things could we help the creator or the platforms? create an additional revenue stream, right? Or is that the only way we can create, uh, or we're relying on that alone? Um, maybe not. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the innovation will take place in in the foreseeable future. Yeah, yeah. You know, you mentioned music NFTs um, or, or, or just music and Web3 in general, right? It's It's been a fascinating journey to see how that space has evolved over the last year, year plus. What's your general take? I mean, obviously, there's something there's something powerful about an image associated with a digital collectible that that has sort of obvious in terms, if, especially if you add the profile pick component and so people attach their identity to it, right? And and a and a music NFT attached, you know, a, a sound clip or a song attached to a digital collectible doesn't necessarily have the same grasp to it as a, as an image, but there are a lot of fascinating innovative things happening I, I met a bunch of groups at nft nyc this year that are doing some really interesting things in music i'm curious where what are you seeing and then how are you consulting people, like artists that are in in the music space to, to think about it yeah so our approach will be somewhat different from some of the folks uh, i've probably met some of the folks you mentioned at mm. uh, nft nyc mm. a lot of the folks are working on using nft technology to as a, almost like a ro- licensing model Mm. So you'll you'll record certain um, clips and using NFTs as a way to automate and create a permissionless royalty system, which I think is great. That that is all, but that's only one right mechanism for music. 
Um, we, what we're looking at building and, and envisioning is can we bring, because um, I'm, I'm a huge live music person, right? So I always look at it and say, hey, how can I create a corollary in a digital space that is as engaging as it is for me going to a bar, going to a show? Um, so we think that there are some ways that we could bridge. I don't think it would, the digital space will ever you know, replace or even replicate that physical human interaction. Um, but there are things that I think we can do that could enhance the physical interaction. And I think that's where mm -hmm. we can do more. Um, so for Mad World, I think you know, we're not limiting ourselves to the royalty. We may end up frankly, partnering with one of these companies that we talked about hmm. um, to use their tech. Again, there's no no sense in reinventing the wheel here. Um, but for us, is we if we have the artist relationships, we have, we're focusing more on um, the, the digital uh, IRL, if you will, w with the physical experience. I think there's a way that we can um, link these products and experiences together in a way that the pie gets bigger. Right. We don't think of ourselves in Web3 as, you know, owning uh, everything. Uh, it's, it's a very different space than, uh, you know, in my previous career in enterprise software, mm -hmm. right? Which is if I'm not in the top three in market share, I'm probably getting run out of the, <laughs> the market. It, it's, a, it's a very different mentality. You could be, you know, 10th, 15th um, in, in that grouping. But there's very little difference, and you differentiate primarily by audience, by the IPs you work with, mm -hmm. and if you have the right subset and connect connections with these um, partners, um, you could build some pretty interesting content alliances. And I and I see that as a way for Web three to counter some of these more centralized approaches that's been obviously very successful in the past. Mm hmm. That's good. You know, I haven't asked this question in a while, but especially given everything that's happened the last couple of years, for the person who's new, right? Because a lot of people listen to this or just they're trying to catch up, right? They're trying to catch up with Web3 or they're new to the space. They've seen all the shenanigans happen this year, but they still, at least the savvy ones, understand that this is the time to build, right? This is the time to really get into it. What resources or approaches or or sort of tactics that you have for people that are new to web three that are just getting into it? Like, where would you, where would you point people if they're like, how do I, how do I get up to speed in web three? So it's, it's interesting. There, there is actually so much um, uh, resources and folks willing to reach out and help mm. and have a, uh, a conversation. Um, you know, I know people discount Twitter, uh, I know people discount some of the media, the, the Web3 media as shills and influencers. But if you look at the uh, content that's provided, there's actually quite a bit of uh, uh, community. I mean, people are very, I mean, I found obviously there are lots of scams, mm -hmm. but there's also plenty of uh, content providers in music. They'll, they'll write you know, Substack. There's so many of these guys and, and Medium that... They, they write weekly newsletters on projects they follow, mm. um, infrastructure that they use, what are some uh, effective marketing tactics. Uh, there's a lot of help out there. And so I encourage everyone not to be discouraged by the seemingly, you know, scammer, don't click that. You know, and yes, there are um, quite a bit out there, but I think keeping an open mind about these uh, resources and you'll find the help that you see. Um, yeah. And it's a, there, there's no book. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a living process right now. And, uh, you know, just DM somebody. I, you'll, be, you'll be shocked at actually how many folks, you know, respond positively and say, hey, let's do a quick Zoom. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Maybe we can work together. Maybe I'll give you a whitelist. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of... Um, folks who are feeling the pain and <laughs> right now <laughs> and if if nothing else it it builds uh you know a sense of empathy and and also a cohesiveness in the community that if you're if you if you suffer through this and you're if you're going to build for the future 
we're in it together. Um, and that's something very different from, I think, you know, the early 2000s as I mentioned, that, 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 uh, mm, yeah, that group. It's a good point. It's a very, it's a very uh, different environment. I mean, you know, again, having been through that part, it's, uh, in a way, it's a little reassuring that we're not completely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. All right. So where can people go to learn more, to, to uh, you know, engage with you, to maybe DM you? Like where, where, where can people find you and, and learn more about Mad World? Yeah. So uh, feel free to check out our website, uh, madworld.io. Um, I'm, you know, always available for DMs on Twitter, fil- filtran. Uh, you know, ETH, um, you, you know, just uh, give me a shout. Um, we got a pretty big team, you know, based in Hong Kong. We've got folks in japan um we're actually building a team now in la cool. so come uh, come say hello and uh we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll chat more awesome no this has been really really helpful thanks for thanks for your time this has been great thanks well thanks for having me All right, a couple quick things before you go. Number one, I have a general newsletter where I write about technology and startups and health science and teaching people to code. And I write about a variety of different subjects that we talk about on this show. So if you go to wclittle.com, there you'll be able to subscribe. And you'll also be able to subscribe to particular topics. If you're just interested in one or a few of them, you'll be notified right when I publish new content in those areas. Number two, my partners and I at Proto Ventures have a portfolio company called Startup Rocket. If you go to startuprocket.com, there you'll be able to receive coaching guides and customize an operations framework for you and your team and your advisors to be on the same page in terms of what is the appropriate next step for you and your entrepreneurial journey. And finally, if you wouldn't mind leaving a review anywhere that you have listened to this podcast or watched this podcast, it'd be super helpful to help those who might be interested in consuming this content as well. Thank you.